20 secret Minecraft features you should try. Did you know that you can craft granite using quartz and diorite? Did you know they can grow crops faster in a row? Oh, you do? Good. Because today we're gonna tell you some of the Minecraft facts that you possibly don't already know. Dogs are a great asset to have in your Minecraft world. If anything, it's just nice to have a companion while you explore. But all that upside can come crashing down if the little guy bites the dust. So to keep that man's best friend on the up and up, it's worth taking notice of its tail. See, the way that it's coated, the lower the wolf's tail goes, the less health that it has. Meaning, if you see it like this, it's worth passing them a stake or something to heal them up. And as an added bonus, this also means that we can rotate their tail like so if we increase the health too. Weird, huh? I'm gonna come out and say it, silverfish are a real pain. A bold statement, I know. So if you're like me and you're trying to avoid being ambushed yet again while finding the end portal, then a silk touch tool is a good pick to have. See, if you have a tool enchanted with silk touch that isn't a pickaxe, then we can use that as a dowsing machine to see where any potential infested blocks happen to be. And hey, it'll even let us pick them up for later use, whatever you choose that to be. And while I shouldn't directly advocate for it, I do think it'd make for quite the prank, just saying. For the building community, copper is one of the most exciting blocks that's been added in a while. But with all those different weathered and oxidized variants, it begs the question, what's the best way to get them? Well, thanks to this user, this format seems to be the solution. Here, we not only get a space efficient layout, but we also get to see something that holds up to the mechanics. Because you see, copper oxidizes faster with a four block gap in between. So this takes that into account for the best solution. And as soon as you have the landmarks set for where to place each block, this should be a big help for getting that Statue of Liberty up and running. Normally, wandering traders seem pretty useless, and oftentimes, they're not worth keeping around for the trades. But if you're gonna get rid of them for loitering, keep this in mind first. See, while we usually kill these guys and their llamas for a new set of leads, that's not where the free stuff ends. But rather, if you were to get the jump on a wandering trader while they're drinking their invisibility potion at night, then you'll actually drop the potion as an item, which isn't the most ethical, but it certainly does work. So if you're trying to save your golden carrots, at least you know you can trade a life instead of your nuggets. Fire and water don't mix. I mean, even skeletons know that, so it's not rocket science. But that doesn't explain why a site like this works out. See, through a manipulation of the fluid dynamic system, we can effectively have a fireplace underwater. Which is weird for sure, but it does make for a pretty effective trash chute. Now, the way that we set this up is by using a sticky piston and some slime blocks as a temporary shield for the water. And then, after we place down a fire on some netherrack, we can break the piston and the fire will still exist even when the water flows back, giving yet another cursed sight to see. Having a conduit in your ocean is a big flex, so having several of them should make for a big showcase. But after you spent all that time rounding up the prismarine hearts of the sea, it begs the question, do you know the best way to use them? Well, as it turns out, there is a right answer. See, since these conduits give out their effects in such a pattern, the most efficient way to get the full effects wherever you go is by placing the circles in an overlapping fashion like so. And this chart from Block Facts really clears that up. And that'll help you feel like a proper Atlantean anywhere throughout your base. Moving animals from one place to another is a grueling task, but it's a necessary one. So to do this as best as we can, we usually enlist the help of leads. But while those are typically used on land, did you know that they can also function if you ride in a boat? Sure enough, if you grab hold of a bunch of mobs and then hop in a raft, they'll swim fast enough for us to tug them across the seascape. And that's a big relief if you've ever experienced the pain of having to take one animal at a time in your back seat. Because when compared to that, this waterlogged web is a welcome change. Fire doesn't usually seem like a good thing to add to your builds, but sure enough, using these pyrotechnics properly could really add to the atmosphere. And one way to make sure that fireplace really impresses is with the help of a campfire. See, by placing one of these under your netherrack like so, the smoke particles will still rise through the top, letting us supercharge the smokestack and add to the aesthetic what we're going for. And hey, with a hay bale underneath the campfire, that effect can get even meatier. Just make sure none of your pets or friends happen to wander into the flame. Otherwise, that's gonna be tough to justify. Here's a bit of a riddle for you. How do you get an infinite water source using just one bucket of water? Well, the simple answer should be that you can't, but that's not the case. And if we were to have a cauldron on hand, you'll see why. Apparently in bedrock edition, these cauldrons can fill with a source block above. Meaning that if we fill our cauldron like this, instead of how we're supposed to, we'll be able to pull as many buckets of water as we'd like from the cauldron below. Or hey, if you're in Java, this could also be done using water bottles pulled from the source and then just fill the cauldron like that. Making mobs behave how you want them to is not exactly easy, and oftentimes we're left fighting to get the AI to do what we want. So to fix that and add a water elevator to your mob spawner, this is the solution. See, what happens here is that the mob gets knocked into the fences below, and then that bit of height means that we can use another water source to push them onto place with the soul sand. From there, this water out the back of the elevator creates a current to pull them more into the left, and we make sure that no residual mobs will stay there to clog up the mob cap. And that's a win-win in my eyes. Now, it's commonplace knowledge by this point, you don't place a bed in the 
the nether. I mean, that's just intentional game design. But then it might be a surprise to see this not explode in the end. See, what's happening here is that in Bedrock, it's actually possible to disable this intentional feature through a hidden command. And now in 1.18, we can keep our beds safe by changing the game rule respawn blocks explode to false. And then whether we're interacting with the bed in the nether or respawn anchoring the overworld, neither will explode anymore. And even though we still can't sleep in them even with this changed, at least the villagers can. Carpets are stable for Minecraft building, and odds are that you've seen plenty of floors using the standard 16 variants. And while that's nice, this trick can help it to go a bit further. See, signs are capable of overlapping the carpet's hitbox like so, meaning we can use the pattern of the different signs underneath to essentially detail our carpets from below. And then, with all the different wood types to use, the possibilities start to get pretty ridiculous. So if you're looking to avoid having yet another bland throw rug in your living room, this might be a better alternative to consider. And it's quite easy to pull off, so that's not a bad thing either. If you've ever messed around with the spectator mode, you've likely noticed that by interacting with a mob, you can see through its perspective. And while this offers some fun gags, like the creeper's green tint to the spider's kaleidoscope vision, there's one you might not consider to try. But while it might seem silly, it is entirely possible to spectate an item frame just like the others. And why this happens is probably as simple as that it's an entity like the others, but since we can't do the same for item drops on the floor, I just figured it wouldn't work out. But hey, it does, and I guess we'll still have an inventory slot to boot. Keeping your stuff safe in Minecraft is a key problem, and to help with that, it's usually a good idea to lock down your door in some way. But since an item frame combination or a carrot key are fairly standard by this point, it's worth getting creative. And luckily, the axolotl is our ticket for this. See, much like a rabbit-based detection system, if we hold a bucket of tropical fish within range of the axolotl, it'll move towards the pressure plate and trigger the redstone, allowing us to walk in, and the axolotl will walk back to the water to reset itself. And it's a much friendlier alternative to a pufferfish player detector, that's for sure. Plenty of folks in the community have sung the praises of cooking your food on a campfire instead of the furnace. And hey, we're even guilty of that ourselves. But while YouTubers will mention that, I figured they normally leave this out. Though, if you were to play on Bedrock, it's worth noting that you can cook your food just by lighting yourself on fire. No joke, if you were to set up an array of unlit campfires and then lay out your meats like so, then we could run across after catching a blaze and it'll leave a trail of food cooking behind you. Which is definitely a fire hazard, but at least it results in a couple of medium rares. Moss carpet might be one of the more underappreciated blocks added with the Caves and Cliffs update. So today, let's give some much deserved love to the little guy, since it turns out that moss carpet is surprisingly effective for spawn proofing, especially in the nether. Let me explain. Apparently, moss carpet doesn't catch on fire, even when placed on or around lava, letting us have a vibrant way to prevent mobs from spawning in the nether. And hey, for what it's worth, these items are easy to get as well, given that a moss farm like so provides the carpets as is, instead of having to craft each one like slabs. It doesn't take a lot of redstone know-how to understand a pressure plate, but while we're all familiar with these, this might catch you off guard. See, while it is true that both mobs and items can weigh down these things, an item frame is a rare sight. Though, surely enough, if you place one like so, we can overlap the hitboxes and effectively create a permanent switch on like so. And what's cool about that is that it opens up the door for a nearly invisible redstone signal. And that's what I'd highly recommend for keeping your redstone lamps lit on the lamppost. I mean, it certainly looks a lot better than a lever, that's for certain. Now, this won't be a surprise, but an exploding creeper is not a welcome sight. Though, when you're at this point and the monster's already primed, how do we deal with it? Well, it might seem pointless, but the solution actually hinges around placing a block between your feet and the creepers, since the way that Minecraft calculates explosion damage is based off a ray cast between the source and the bottom of the player's hitbox. Meaning, if we have a block to, well, block the oncoming damage, that will keep us virtually unscathed by the blow. And, in my eyes, that's not too shabby for just a measly piece of cobblestone. Let's face it, being on fire is no fun, and I don't think I'm breaking any new ground there. But while it's easy to extinguish yourself in the overworld, in the nether, not so much. Though, this seemingly useless item can change that. See, if we were to use some of our gunpowder to brew up a splash bottle of water, then these offer some instant relief while traveling the second dimension. And while it's effective as a quick fix, it does beg the question, if you're able to brew up a potion anyway, why not just offer fire resistance instead? But if you don't have the stuff to make that, then this might be a solid alternative anyway. One of the key properties of Minecraft's water is that this stuff gets everywhere, and examples like this show as much. So to stop that, we usually use signs like so to cut off the source, which works for sure, but it's a bit obtrusive, to say the least. So to keep it simple and out of sight, glow lichen is a solid pick. See, besides just lighting up your stuff, this organism is good for blocking flowing water, letting us walk into our water base without a problem, or distracting piece of wood on the side. And if you ask me, that's the best of both worlds, even if it's not the intended use. And with that, folks, have a good one, all right?